In this video, I'm going to talk about the use transition hook in React.js. So the use transition hook was introduced in React 18 and it's a pretty essential feature that you should know of when it comes to improving the performance of your React application. So before I explain the definition and implementation of the use transition hook, I want to first show you what problems we face without the use transition hook. So I'll first show you a problem that we developers can face while working on a React application and how the use transition hook can really significantly help us improve or solve that problem so on the screen i have this example set up over here now it's a pretty simple example i'm going to walk you through it so over here i have the users imported users is nothing but another file that i have created users.js this just exports an array of strings which consists of a bunch of random usernames then i just have two states over here search term and filtered users basically what this setup is doing is whenever i type on this input it filters through the list of users and returns us the name of the users that we have typed onto the input so based on whatever we type in this input if that particular string of characters is included in any of the list of usernames then those usernames will be filtered out and returned to us because we have used item.includes. So just to show you, if I write he, then I get only this one name because this is the only name in that list of usernames that contains or includes the string he. So this is a pretty simple search filter. So over here I have this handle change function and in the return statement we have this input. The input is obviously this one. It has an on change. So whenever we type the handle change is called and this function gets triggered and over here we are just mapping through the filtered users. So in the handle change whenever we filter through the list of users based on whether the value is included or not from the search term that we are typing then based on whatever is returned we just filter through the filtered user state and display the list of users that have been filtered all right so it's a pretty simple one and we are setting the value over here that is being received from the event in on change from which we are destructuring the target and the value itself all right so this is a pretty self-explanatory and simple example now i want to talk about the problem with this implementation so what happens is react usually does something called batching so it batches state updates what does that mean it means that if within this function there are two state updates being utilized so if there are two set states being called simultaneously then react makes sure to batch those state updates which means it updates both these states together and it does that to avoid the number of re-renders caused in your application so this is actually a pretty smart thing that react does which is a very handy feature so we know that the component re-renders when the state has been set so if react did not batch the states then this component would have re-rendered twice once for each time i write on the text input and the second time for when it sets the filtered users so every time it would re-render the component twice each time i typed on this input it would re-render the component twice which is not really a good thing and that's why react batches the states so that it can update both the states together and there will only be one re-render so although this is a pretty smart move there is one issue that can come up which is what if this users that we are trying to filter what if this list of users is very huge now that could pose an issue right because since react tries to update both the state together whenever they occur simultaneously then what will happen is this state update will take a lot of time right provided that this users list is huge so if this users list is huge then this state will have to wait for this state to complete because only then once both these states have been completed react will re-render the component that's what batching does right it's gonna update these states together because they occur simultaneously but in the event that one of the state which is this state in this case takes a lot of time to update then this state would have to wait for this state to complete which is an issue because if the users list would have been huge then then for each key press we would have faced a lag right so for each key press whatever i type over here we would have faced a lag because whenever i type let's say the first letter r then react would first filter through the list of users that include the letter r then that could take a long time if the users list was huge and until react hasn't completely filtered this state it won't be able to set the search term with the value as well which is nothing but the value we input so do you realize if the users list was huge then each time i typed there would have been a considerable delay and it wouldn't be a good user experience because the user would like to see whatever they type on the input to be rendered quickly to them so even if this part says loading the user would at least like to see whatever they're typing on the input to be displayed to them quicker like you can see now it's being displayed as soon as we type which is a good thing but if the user's list was huge then each letter we type would have occurred or would have been visible to the user on the input after a considerable delay which is an issue so although react batching the state updates is an 
amazing feature, it could pose an issue in such a case. And to just show you an example of that, what I'll try to do is I will go to the users.js, I'll copy this list of users and I'll paste it within this array, let's say a lot many times. So much so that the length of the array becomes more than 1000 or maybe 50,000, who knows. So I'll just cut the part where I do that. Alright, so I just pasted a bunch of users a lot many times. Like you can see, we are in line number 27,156. So there are like a lot of users in this list. So let's see what happens now when I try to type in the search input. You can see there was a considerable lag. Like if I try to backspace again, you can see even while backspacing, there was a huge lag. And if I try to, let's say, type anything, you can see I've already typed but there was a huge lag. You could not see each letter come up and now I'm backspacing but there's still a huge lag. Let me try to type again. See, there's still a huge lag. And even when I try to backspace, more and more lag. So you can clearly see that React is trying to batch these state updates together and because the filtering hasn't been completed, so we are not even able to set the search term with the value and that causes a huge issue. And you can also see maximum call stack size has exceeded. We can just cross this. So you can clearly see that React tries to batch both the state updates together because until the filtering of that large list of users hasn't been completed, the set search term isn't being set to the value that the user tries to input. And because of that, you could also see a huge delay while typing on the input. So to fix this issue, React introduced the use transition hook. So one thing to remember is, by default, all these state updates are urgent, which means they're of high priority in React. And because all these state updates are urgent or of high priority, that's why React tries to batch the state updates together and update them together. So basically, React marks both these state updates as urgent, and then it tries to update them together. But with use transition hook, what you can do is, you can mark a particular state as not urgent. And what happens with that is, let's say if we mark this as not urgent, then this state won't have to depend on this state to be completed. So even though both the state updates will happen together, the state update which happens quicker won't have to wait for the other state because use transition will mark that other state which takes a lot of time as non-urgent. So even though the update starts together, the quicker state update won't have to wait for the longer state update and the component re-render can also happen simultaneously. So as soon as the set search term updates, the component re-render will happen and because this will be set as non-urgent, whenever this gets completed, this will also re-render and the application will filter out and map its result over here and because the state would have changed, the component would re-render and the filtered users.map would display the filtered users. So now to demonstrate this to you, let's import the use transition hook. So first, I will write over here use transition and then use transition during implementation is used in the following way you have to write const then is pending and then start transition equals to use transition all right so use transition returns us two values which is the is pending and the start transition so is pending is like a boolean type variable that returns true when the second element start transition function executes and it returns false when the execution of the start transition function is complete. And start transition is a function that takes a callback function as an argument. And this callback function should contain code related to the non-urgent state update. So as I said before, we want this state update to be non-urgent because we don't want this state update to wait for this state update to complete. So we need to mark this as non-urgent, which means as soon as you are completed, you can allow the component to re-render and then whenever this gets done, it will automatically re-render the component again. So since we want this to be non-urgent, we need to wrap this with start transition. So to do that, to wrap this with start transition, I'll just write start transition and then this will take a callback and it will return nothing but an object and that will include whatever we are trying to update, which is the state. So this start transition will wrap the state which we want to mark as non-urgent. And now let me save this and we refresh this once. Don't worry about the maximum call size exceeded because the users list is pretty long. That's why it keeps saying that in between. All right. So now that we have marked this as non-urgent, what we need to do next is we need to utilize this is pending. 
So if you remember I had said that the is pending is like a boolean type and it returns true when start transition function is executing. So as soon as I start typing, because the start transition will start executing, the is pending will be true. Because both the state updates will start together, right? And as written in the use transition hook docs, that when start transition executes, the is pending will be true. So that means even though the list of users won't be visible because this function will be executing and this user's list is long and the filtering process will be going on, we can utilize this is pending which will be of a boolean type having the value of true at that time to show a loading indicator over here. And remember, whatever we type on this input, that will not at all be blocked from this action, from this start transition action, because that is not marked as non-urgent. So the set search term won't have to wait for the set filtered users to complete. So to just demonstrate that, what I'll do is I'll go down here and then over here, I'll add curly braces and I'll say is pending. So if is pending, then I'll render out a div and that div will contain nothing but loading. And then otherwise, I will simply paste this div which maps the list of filtered users. Alright, so with that we are pretty much done with the code. Now I can just refresh this and test things out. Now our goal is when I start typing over here, we should get the loading over here in the filtered users list, but there should be no delay when we type. Like in the previous example where we weren't using start transition and we were doing it in the normal react way, in that case there was a significant delay if you remember. You can go back in time and check that delay as well. But now let's say I start typing something he. You can see that comparatively there is lot less delay than before and you can also see that loading text coming up let me try to type again so if i say wd you can at least see the letters coming out one by one even though there is a little bit of delay there's still way less delay compared to before like without using start transition i remember the entire application used to get stuck for a while and even while backspacing it used to get stuck so if i start to write t then h s a you can see you can see the letters properly and then things render out one by one without a huge lag or huge delay coming up like before so in my opinion this does seem way more fast compared to the normal react way because at least we are able to type properly and the user is able to see what they are trying to type so one last try if i type something you can see we are able to see the letters one by one. So even if the list of users required to be filtered is huge, this set search term value does not wait for this to complete. It starts rendering out first all by itself. And then when the start transition function has been completely executed, the is pending becomes false. And then the list of filtered users are visible to us. So use transition hook was definitely way faster compared to the normal react way. And you can go back in time in the video to see the difference as well, because as I type real time, I could see a significant performance improvement. So in a nutshell, with use transition hook, you can specify any state updates as non-urgent. And these non-urgent state updates will occur simultaneously with other urgent state updates, but the component rendering will not wait for the non-urgent state updates. So you can utilize use transition hook whenever you notice that the built-in react batching could cause a performance problem. And remember, the batching process which react does, in which it updates two states together if they're occurring simultaneously, is actually a pretty good feature because it saves a lot of re-renders. But in cases like these, you can definitely use something like the use transition hook to bypass it. Because obviously batching does make the component look slow in this case. So that's all for the video, if you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as usual, stay tuned for more.